Hey guys, this is a uh, quick F18 ramp start tutorial. Couldn't find one, but since 4.33 is coming out, I'm pretty sure everyone else just like me is just ex just as excited to uh, ramp start this thing and fly it and get into the action, especially with these wonderful naval ops. Devs did a great job on this. Alright, so let's get started. So, it's noisy as hell, and uh, you're going to kind of have to reach around eh, for your canopy. And it takes a bit for it to close, so just give that a second. I give it about like five seconds. There you go. See, I don't know. There's been quite a delay. On I've noticed even in the regular F16, there's a delay. Okay, so let's go down over here to your electricity power. All right, you want to make sure that battery's on override, and you just want to do a single click on the left and right generator. Okay. And uh, let's come down. You want to turn your pitot heat to auto and your uh, air bleed to the left off. Don't ask why, it's just how it is. <coughs> uh, turn your radar on, your INS to ground. And you want to do a single click on the comms G transmit. Uh, you want to switch this, your backup, to your UFC. Turn your RWR audio on. Turn your weapon audio on. And we'll get started with the uh, JFS Start 2. It's just a single click, left click. And there you go, it's starting up. And, uh, you know, it takes some time for your DED to load up. This is your DED, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click this on now. It's a left click to start, and if you want to turn it off, it's a right click. I don't know why it takes a long time for this thing to start up. Uh, it drove me crazy because I didn't know what I was doing, and I eventually found out that you have to press that button and just wait for it to start. <clears throat> and if you hear voice cracks it's here and there, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sick, so just bear with me. Alright, so we're at 20% RPM. Uh, this starts both of the, the uh, engines, so you don't have to worry about individual engines though you can control your individual engines. Um, it starts both of them up automatically. And we have engine power. Yep, see, there you go, your DED started right there. Okay, so let's go back down over here. Um, you have your lighting right here. There's another lighting button hidden right back here. Let's single click that, I don't know why I'm just click that. Uh, your formation lights. And here are your avionics. You want to turn these on. Okay, just make sure these four are on. Don't touch this one. Uh, this is your parking brake. So you want to set that. Even if it's your emergency brake, this one doesn't work. Uh, I've seen a lot of sims do that, including FSX. Alright, so let's move down over here to this panel right behind the stick. You want to turn this on. This on. And this one. And this one. Okay. Uh, I believe this is your RWR. You want to turn that on. Click this for the power, and click that for the uh, the handoff. All right. Wonderful. So let's move back up here and turn on your NFDs. Either one will turn all of them on, all three. All right. And your FCR will start doing its bit test. Okay. So. While we're here, I'm going to load up my data cartridge. Alright, so we're back on the data cartridge. And you're going to have a whole bunch of warnings, okay? And this seems to be something that they implemented in uh, 4.33 with every aircraft. Uh, you're going to have all your warnings on. So what you need to do is you need to open up your test page and clear it. Okay? And that gets rid of the avionics fault. Um, this happens for all aircraft. Don't worry, you didn't do anything wrong. It's perfectly fine. Alright, so... Let's see, what else can we do while we're waiting? Um, ah, yes, your comms volume. Comm 1. Comm 2. And this DED is such a pain in the ass to see. Ah, jeez, I don't want to input these manually, so I'll just reload my data cartridge. Uh, these aren't routine ways to get the aircraft started, but uh, this is how I figured it out. 
I couldn't find any kind of uh, any kind of ramp sorts, so I kind of just looked at the, looked at the uh, documents for a bit. Okay, so this is your HUD brightness right here, so you can turn this up. Alright, cool. So you got your HUD on, got all this on. Mm, let's see. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, oh, wait. Actually, this is your countermeasures panel. So that's off, standby, manual, semi, and auto. Okay? And you can right click it, you could left click it, go back and forth. I think after auto it just turns off. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep that to manual right now. This is how you change your program, program 1 through 4. Uh, this is your navigation. And this one you can't right click, you only left click, so it cycles between all of them. This is your manual tack end right here. Uh, you could also do it through the ICP. You know, just like the regular F16 tack end, air to air. Uh, and the other one, I don't know the name for it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't look like the RVR is on, but it, it, it is. It definitely is. Uh, right here is your uh, HMCS brightness. So, there you go. You have your HMCS right there. So, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, holding DMS down. And, um, let's check our ILS right here. Let's do list and six. Alright, you have it ready. So, alright, set that there. And, um, I think this is your com. No, this is to turn up and down your steer points. Yeah, that's up and down. This is up and down. Actually, no, this is your list button right here. There we go. It's your list button. Don't know what that is. <laughs> Don't know what any of these are. This is just a ramp start. Uh, your rocker switch. So, for example, if you go into, uh, let's say, uh, list. Or scratch that, scratch that. If you're going to your uh, attack M, you press 1. This is your four-way rocker switch right here. So if you press this to the right, it switches it from air to air. Okay. If you go back over here, this one chooses what your, uh, your, your pretty much your source of interest when it comes to your DED. You you can change steer points with this, you know, and by changing your source of interest with uniform, you can change up and down. And to the left is return, pretty much. So if I go to I don't know, go to any other page and just want to return to your main DED, you just click that to the, to the left. Okay. Uh, to change your COM1 and COM2 frequencies, here's COM1, and here's COM2. See those little green buttons? And honestly, other than that, I think there, that's really all there is to it. So now that we're all lined up and good to go, I'm going to set this, set my radar hot, even though it's unnecessary. Uh, oh, yeah, your seat. Just click that down, click it up, you know. That's your arming, that's disarmed, and that's arming for your seat to eject. Um, I think you just need to use Control e to eject. I don't, I've never found anything when it comes to ejecting. So, uh, alright, so let's uh, remove shocks. I don't have it set to the carrier. I was having issues setting it to the carrier. Beautiful carrier. So let's go ahead and enable nose wheel steering. Turn off our parking brake taxi to the catapult and I'll explain how the catapult works okay all right so what you want to do when you're going to the catapult is pretty much what you uh, you want to align it up to that rail right there okay and you want to slow up your speed and you kind of just want to do a slow little glide toward it all right keep going and then it'll automatically stop right there I can throttle up, and I won't move. All right. So the way you engage the catapult, in fact, the blast right there, the uh, blast shield back there is uh, come up automatically. That's another way to indicate that you're on catapult. So the way this works, okay, for starters, let's unfold our wings. They're folded right now. Here is the unfold switch right here. 
Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. It says it'll go down, and you'll see your wings start to fold down. Cool. Now my flaps are set to auto. Uh, I haven't really figured out how to change them. I don't see any like motion in there, nor any indication up here as to if the flaps are engaged. So I just, I don't even bother with that. I just leave that at auto. By the way, this is your landing light. Totally forgot to do that. Taxi landing light. Um, okay. So the way uh, taking off works pretty much in the F-18 on a catapult. I th what I've read on the manual is that you need to engage either full mill or full burner in order for it to work. Okay, You don't get any indication and you do not control the launch on your own. It throws you off without any indication, no choice, just as long as you have your throttle set to mill or higher, you're going to get launched off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go full throttle, and you'll get catapult ready right up here, and we're going to launch right pull up, gear up, and you're good to go. Your flaps are set to auto, so I'm assuming they come back up after a certain speed. All right, so that's how uh, you take off. I will now demonstrate how to land on a carrier. Okay, so what you want to do for this is you want to have your hook down, okay? That's your hook right there. You'll see the green hook. It's down. Alright, so our hook is down. Cool. Now, this is kind of a crappy approach kind of deal that I'm going to do, but I it's late. It's like 4 in the morning right now. I've been trying to figure this whole thing out with uh, Jone and the team speak. Just bullshitting pretty much. Alright, so... You want to come in at about 12, uh, 1,200 feet, okay? Once you get up to 1,200 feet, uh, you want to deploy your landing gear. Landing gear is coming down, and we got the indication right there that the nose, left, and right gear are down, okay? And then you pretty much just want to follow your meatball all the way in. Now, your touchdown speed is going to be somewhere between 160 knots and 170. So you want to make sure you don't go too fast, or you will break your gear. But you don't want to. You want to make sure you're not going too slow, or else you'll stall and just slam right into the deck or the water. And this is going to be kind of a rough landing. Okay, you can't really go on a glide slope. I mean, you can, but I don't know. I'm not a professional fucking pilot, so you know, I just I put my meatball right right on the strips or right above them a little bit just make sure it's on the runway itself and you just you don't want to go too low you kind of have to guesstimate I'm not too sure how the real pilots do it and kind of pull it up pull it up and okay touchdown full throttle okay now bring it back bring the hook up Alright, and you taxi to parking area. These elevators right here are usually where they park, considering aircraft will park on the other side, as you saw in the beginning of this video. And I'm turning right now with my toe brakes, but you should turn on your nose wheel steering. So I'm just going to do a, a uh, 360 flip a bitch. I'm going to fold my wings. And if you're wondering why I went full throttle, is because if you, for some reason, do not trap a wire, you want to make sure you have enough power to get out of that uh, or else uh, a lot of the times you'll just fall right into the water <clears throat> um, for some reason say I'm, I'm a forgetful person so I like to make it habit that I slam my throttle all the way to full afterburner because I will probably forget my hook I know myself if I forget my gear then I'm just fucked in general but other than that you know that is how to ramp start taxi take off and land on an F-18 in Falcon BMS 4.3-3. Hope you guys enjoyed.